history of furniture, it seems that design doesn't go at an even pace. There are big jumps, and one of those big jumps was certainly in the 1960s, when B&B's research department really started looking at what you could do with these new foams, these new materials, these new techniques, and it's still relevant today. At the Borborga, you just have this same thing set vertically in some way. Very graphic. You have a box and then three meters above it you put on a roof to give shade and ventilation. That interspace serves to house all the installations that power the building. Coming into work every day, I see this extraordinary piece of architecture made in 1971 by Renzo Piano. Today, I fully realize what an extraordinary visionary my father was. Adventure, challenge, innovation. Piero Ambrogio Busnelli was so modern that he even preempted the Pompidou Center at his own house. For the design of the new headquarters of the B&B Italia in 1971, he chose Renzo Piano, a young architect who was still unknown, but who, like Busnelli and many others in this story, preferred to look to the future. This was what Busnelli was made of. Dreams, Shakespeare would say. Today, we'd say visions, or the ability to create them. Italians work for enjoyment. We export all over the world. Wherever there's a furniture store that focuses on design, B&B &B Italia is there. The slogan of our company is timeless and treasured. This is a story of meetings among giants. Here are no small lives, only great talents who come together and create opportunities, like Piano and Richard Rogers, who, here in a corner of Brianza, did a test model of the Pompidou Center, which was built to their plans soon after in Paris. Or like Oliviero Toscani, who caused a scandal at the 1972 Salone del Mobile with his naked shots of Warhol muse Donna Jordan for the launch of Le Bambole by Mario Bellini. Behind and at the fore of all of this, Piero Busnelli, a portrait of a friend tells it better than a thousand words. A lion ready to leap on its prey, to grasp novelty in the world as would a hunter. Instinct in its purest form. Thus was the man who even dared to quietly suggest that the Japanese should change the way they live. A severe country like Japan should improve the quality of human life. I'm angry because these small houses, this insignificant furnishings, great responsibility. A person of total simplicity, but also of finesse, of extraordinary refinement. Adventures always begin with a traveling companion. In this case, it was Piero Busnelli, who was a genius. Piero Ambrogio Busnelli was a catalyst. He was someone you could put in a situation where there were technical elements. The market, economics, marketing, and so on. 
and he had this fire in his eyes that made you feel you were at your best. He was very tough, very strong, but he had extraordinary humanity which always enabled him to recover. Everyone always forgave him. They forgave him everything. The great Pierino, as he was called, was loved by all. He's a man whom I remember especially for his great intelligence. Even so genuine. But an immense intelligence and a prodigious curiosity. He was attracted to everything. He was hungry for information, hungry for opportunities. He always spoke of innovation, of the need to innovate. And innovation embraced all fields. He always took the bull by the horns, anything, any problem. He had to solve it immediately. And he was a man who had the authority and the charisma, which has cast a long shadow over the company that he started. You could see his vision and the sense of being determined to get things right. He started something special. The thing about Busnelli, designer Marco Zanuso once said to journalist Giorgio Bocca, is that he has the lightning reflexes of a Formula One driver. He decides on the spot, see before understanding, instinctively decide the road to take. No hang-ups about culture, despite the fifth grade education, an extraordinary nose. There was this strong relationship between construction technique and expression, and basically success has always been there. There was always this strong investment in technology, but not as an end in itself. Technology was a means to invent form. Renzo Piano's building in Novedrate became the manifesto of the business idea that Busnelli had in mind from the beginning, a formula of modernity, innovation in materials. The search for solutions in development, flexibility and functionality in the product's range, timeless design and long-lasting durability. Extraordinary vision. In 1966, he created this company that still relies primarily on ideas and production concepts from 50 years ago. In 2016, B&B Italia is turning 50. So let's consider these 50 years that some people insist on calling miraculous, but which are in no way supernatural because the DNA of B&B Italia contains very earthly passions. In the 60s, Piero Busnelli was one of the many armchair manufacturers in Brianza. Fratelli Busnelli, established with his brother in 1953, was successful. These were the boom years, and the furniture industry was profitable. But this wasn't enough for Piero. He had a higher goal. Brianza was full of furniture artisans, but the whole industry was based on manufacturing and handcrafts. He instead wanted to industrialize production and dreamed of conquering foreign markets. The Italian industry was little more than half a century old and was concentrated in a few industry groups, Pirelli, Edison, Bassetti, Fiat, Olivetti. Piero Busnelli began to experiment with new materials. He focused on alternatives to foam, on the latest technologies. He followed whoever was ahead. And despite lacking languages, he traveled a lot and did research. It was in London, near the end of one of these trips, that the fire in Piero Busnelli's eye was inflamed by a small detail, which to many others would have seemed insignificant, a machine that spat out rubber ducks. But he saw something else. That machine worked with cold-pressed polyurethane injected as foam into molds. Why not try it on sofas as well? The leap from ducks to sofas, however, was not so simple. Polyurethane had been invented by Dr. Otto Bayer in 1937. But when the unknown Busnelli came knocking on the door of German pharmaceutical giant Bayer, he was sent back to the Italian dealers. 
Piero Busnelli would go it alone. More investment and research was needed. His brother was not convinced and did not support him. Piero left the company, and on the 13th of April 1966, his new adventure began. It was the day of his 40th birthday. In 1966, I left my old company, leaving everything to my brother. With the money he gave me, I started off alone with only 10 people. Workers and office staff I took from the company. 10 loyal followers. Then, one day I got a call from the gentleman of Casina, the industry leader. Casina asked Dad, so, what is your idea? My father explained that all companies, including Casina, were constructing their sofas with wooden frames in the handcrafted way. Dad explained his idea of an iron frame, not a wood one, which is fitted inside a mold. Then the mold is closed and the cold processed polyurethane injected. After 25 to 30 minutes, the product is ready to be extracted. A revolutionary idea for the furniture industry, which was still largely handcrafted, Piero Busnelli dreamed up an industrial process that even today, after half a century, is still perfect and has remained almost identical. And this is what he explained to Cesare Cassina when they met. Cesare Cassina, Cesare Cassina was intrigued by the idea. From there, a bond grew. And after several meetings, they decided to set up C&B. If you go back to the roots of B&B and the first company, Chay&B, which was started with the casinos, it was a company which took a humble industry furniture and made it something special. C&B or Casina and Busnelli. On the one hand, tradition, partnerships with top Italian designers, natural products and craftsmanship. And on the other, innovation, technology, and the idea of the industrial process. Two worlds that fused to create something that did not exist yet. The logo design was entrusted to another genius, Bob Norder. Piero Busnelli did not want his C&B to be a factory made of prefabricated panels, so he went to see what Benetton had built in Ponzano in 1964 and called in Afra and Tobia Scarpa. These two Venetian architects in their early 30s began their plans for C&B, focusing primarily on spaces and production organization. In fact, the Novedrate plant is an example of functionality. Busnelli crowned excellence with excellence, just as he would do six years later with Renzo Piano. I remember it well because I was 13 years old. Dad invited me to go to see the Benetton factory, designed by Afra and Tobia Scarpa. We went to visit to see if it could be right for C&B. I remember because it was my first trip in a Ferrari, belonging to Mr. Cesare Casina, and I was seated behind. It was supposed to be a two plus two, but was a plain two-seater. I was sitting crossways in the car, but really it was a double thrill for me to go and see Benetton and travel in a Ferrari. They had a Y shape, like pillars. But we made an inverted T with the C and B Italia brand inside. Busnelli used technology to open up new creative possibilities for the big names of the Casina world. Gianfranco Frattini, Marco Zanuso, Vico Magistretti, Mario Bellini, and Avra and Tobia Scarpa. The latter pair were responsible for the first design intended entirely for industrial mass production, the Coronado. Constructed in parts to be assembled with only two screws, it was perfect for shipping worldwide. Busnelli scored a bullseye with Coronado. It was the symbol of a new industrial culture. It was the first sofa where every metal structure was embedded in the polyurethane. This time, the doors of Bayer opened wide for the man who created the first polyurethane sofa. Thus, a new partnership with the German company began and would last for many years. 
the first Coronado advertisements aimed to highlight the revolutionary industrial process. Subsequently, the focus was on comfort and durability. Another award-winning piece from 1966 was the Amanta, designed by Mario Bellini. I remember that I very quickly picked up a piece of paper as I was walking, and I drew what would become the Amanta. Regarding the presses for making the frames of the Amanta chairs, and later the Amanta tables, rather than taking a normal press of 500 tons, which was sufficient to make the products currently in the collection, he decided on a 1,500 ton press. This was another thing inherent in Dad's strong character. He actually completely changed the way to produce. We now had a company with industrial processes. The next five years produced some of the icons of Italian design, thanks to new technologies. Each project was in turn supported by innovative advertising campaigns, led by art director Enrico Trabacchi, creating pieces that would become history. Enrico Trabacchi worked mostly with graphics and slogans, as seen in the irony of campaigns about the technology coup taking place at C&B. Another key historical image is the lombrico of Marco Zanuso, infinitely modular units, a sofa bench concept for a society where the idea of public space was at the fore. Then in 1969 came the Up by Gaetano Pesce, still an icon of contemporaneity. The Up was revolutionary, both for its use of polyurethane technology and how it was offered to the market. It was delivered vacuum-packed like a giant colorful slice of cheese and once the packaging was opened it regained its real shape as envisaged by the designer and the presentation of up was a call to action you're invited to animate these objects by gaetano pesce with your presence to impress on them a meaning to exploit their possibilities to observe them going up I was 28 years old when I did this chair, which was the first functional object with political significance. The up is famous because it speaks of the woman constricted by male prejudice. I think the chair really was a strong comment on society. Mario Bellini tells us how he created his Le Bambole series in 1972 when Trabacchi brought in Toscani. Le Bambole is like a multiform pillow, i.e. not designed with a structure of headrests, armrests, backrests, etc. But as a single object, it was an absolute first. The first time a sofa was made simply as a padded cushion and nothing else. It became this innovative thing that enjoyed monstrous success. It was Toscani's idea to use this model, who was also one of Andy Warhol's models. And the thing was censored at the Salone del Mobile, the president of Cosmetzoid, and had a black stripe put over it. Even more successful, of course. For c &B, communications were a new religion that accompanied the announcement of each product. Design, production and communications were filtered through a principle that became the Piero Brusnelli creed, the continuous exchange of ideas. So much so that for a few years, business meetings and presentations to press and customers were held on cruise ships. And the summer holidays saw business colleagues become friends who would spend leisure time together. That was the era in the late 60s and early 70s when C&B earned the first of its four Compasso d'Oro. Le Bambole was designed in 1972, and in the same year they were awarded the Compasso d'Oro, one of the first times the award went to a piece of furniture. I don't think an upholstered sofa had ever have won it. 
Again in 1972, Italian design became an international phenomenon, with an exhibition at the MoMA in New York. C&B appeared at the new domestic landscape exhibition with two installations. The first was a work in polyurethane by Gaetano Pesce, who also directed the video and illustrated the relationship between man and space. The second was the Cara Sutra, Mario Bellini's single space concept vehicle, an ancestor of the modern minivan. Meanwhile, the turnover of C&B grew and was soon on a par with Casina. Too successful, Cesare Casina was at a crossroads. Piero Busnelli recounts those days of 1973. <laughs> What happened is that after five years, with Casina's designers and my technology, C&B Casina and Busnelli became bigger than the mother company. From that point, disagreements began because Casina's number one competitor was C&B. The battle ended after two years, with my victory, when I bought out Casina's share quota and changed the name from C&B to B&B, &B, which at that time really meant banks and Busnelli, because the money for the buyout came from the banks. However, the 73 to 74 period was good. Within two years or three, I'd repaid all the bank loans. I then left B&B Italia, banks and Busnelli, and created Busnelli and Busnelli, myself and my sons. I must say that Dad always told me, whatever I learned about design, whatever I learned about designers, I owe to Cesare Casino. When Dad bought the company, he needed executives. When I eventually finished school and was about to go to university, he said, look, Giorgio, I need you. Join me into the company. So in 1973, I came into the company working in the research center. From there, I started my career at B&B Italia. With the birth of B&B Italia, the R&D center was set up at Novidate, that within C&B had immediately taken on a key role in relations between designers, business, technology, and production. It emerged from the experience of those first seven extraordinary years and soon embraced marketing and communications. And it was in communications that B&B Italia beat another record. It was the first furniture company to advertise on TV with 21 15 second commercials. Give me the superfluous and I will do without the bare essentials. B&B Italia, a Landa sofa. One product that was highly innovative and reflective of changes in everyday habits was the Alanda by Paolo Piva, a designer who in the early 80s worked in direct contact with the Research and Development Center. Alanda was first a sofa, then a bed, but even as a piece of furniture, it was a machine with a mechanism, designed and patented in details by the R&D Center. You move it with simple actions to adjust the headrest, armrest and bedside table, according to the wish of the body. I want to emphasize that this center was a melting pot of ideas, of discussion, quarrels and disagreements. That's where the B&B Italia philosophy was forged. The R&D center is the heart and mind of B&B Italia. There was a technical staff that helped the designers to develop the product, the design and the pre-industrial stage. It was essential before sending it to production, which was not equipped for such dialogue. It was like going into a place where different people have skills. 
like those who can saw wood or cut iron and weld it. They take the pieces of foam, shape them, put them in and position them. Someone else stitches the cloth. There were all these specialisms. And with a day's work, you could get something on its feet. In the laboratories and offices, we have 25 people supporting the designers, taking care of all the technical aspects of the project. The Research and Development Centre, one of the industry's largest, is now the past and future of the company. All designs are carefully preserved and their ideas and prototypes, experiments and technology solutions are meticulously stored. The R&D Centre interprets and gives shape to the creativity of designers. The key word is, be critical and constructive in relation to innovation. In the late 80s, I designed the Harry. Harry was a perfectly normal sofa, but I decided to put a foot at the corners. 30 years later, this feature seems absolutely normal. Today's sofas that have a metal foot on the corner seem absolutely obvious and natural. Sometimes that's the secret of design when innovation emerges from the littlest details. The research centre is very important for B&B Italia. I think it's a fantastic thing for a designer. It's very soft. It's perfect. That's better. Coming to the research development office in, in, in Novedrate, it's incredible, I mean, how I, I, I get welcomed by them and how they really assist me from the first sketches. It's very interactive, uh, it's very supporting, um, and I learn a lot from them, or I give a lot to them as well. So uh, I believe it's, it's a perfect teamwork. And at the head of this team, known to all designers who've set foot in B&B &B Italia, are Orlando Gola and Federico Busnelli, men of few words who for over 40 years have worked day by day, not only with designers, but with advances in technology, market laws, social and aesthetic changes. And the younger generation, like Giorgio's son, Massimiliano Busnelli and Ambrogio Spotti. No question, and Rolando and his team are absolutely the best. They have the vision to see the idea. They can see the idea from a very simple card mock-up. I think that shows the kind of years of experience they have in working with design. So they don't need to see a fantastic rendering with everything finished. And we had lots of little um, blue foam models and we, we were very excited when we were presenting it to Max and to Rolando. And um, I remember Rolando just putting his finger on the model and it tipping up like that and he was saying, and then, of course, you, you feel, a, you know, like, oh, my God, OK, you know. And then he says, don't worry, we'll find a way. And so by the end of the day, we had a full-size wooden model mock-up, and we were trying to figure out how we could position the legs, what we could do to try and mitigate any form of tipping. And uh, then we found a way. When we receive a design idea, we don't waste our time trying to understand its real potential on paper. We start the prototyping process straight away. To tell us how B&B Italia turns an idea into a successful product, we have Nauto Fukasawa with Papilio, a chair inspired by the wings of a butterfly. First, we found some kind of outline of the Papilio but it was, has a leg in, in the bottom, and it's not really strong it yet. And uh, we discuss about, okay, how about more kind of monolithic form? So then every time I go to the CLS, they already prepare the three-dimensional paper drawing attached onto the conical shape, then giving the pen to cut out the, the one in the reel. So I was very enjoy that too. So it is like a real sculpture. I think that, of course, when we saw the prototype, I was so surprised because it was very close to our vision, and yet it was better than how I imagined it to be. The R&D center is also responsible for the corporate image worldwide and coordinates all the advertising campaigns, catalogs, and the website. It organizes all the events and exhibitions, 
and also supports the entire distribution network and helps organize and coordinate all our flagship stores. And it was for the constant work of integration to combine the values of scientific and technological research that in 1989, B&B Italia received the fourth Compasso d'Oro, the first instance of the award going to a company. An award plays a key role in the development of Italian design. After Le Bambole, the Compasso d'Oro created in 1954 from an idea by Joe Ponti went to B&B Italia for its first wardrobe, Sesamo, by Studio Kairos, produced in 1984, featuring a patented device that allowed full alignment of the flush sliding doors. The wardrobe seemed to disappear into the room like a new wall. In 1987, it was the turn of Siti, which turned the concept of the sofa into a multi-use seating system for resting, socializing, or relaxing in front of the TV. As home interiors became more complex, forms had to find new layouts. Siti was designed by Antonio Citerio, a Politecnico-trained architect from Meda. Familiar with the factories and workshops of Brianza, he knew the materials and processes, and this pleased Busnelli greatly. He's good. He knows wood. He knows the techniques. He has a completely different mindset. For years now, he has lived and breathed the company. He knows everything. How to make a chair, how to make a cabinet. By 1987, Citerio had been with the company for 10 years and he shared Piero Busnelli's passion for looking clearly at the reality of now in order to design the world to come. The city was a great evolution in sofa typology. At that time, I could see what was happening. We used the sofa for eating, watching television, listening to music and sleeping. I knew the problem was not to find a form, but at a conceptual level, to think of a new typology. This is why I started doing these long sofas. The innovation of that time has become commonplace now. I call it the science of understanding movements and evolution. The immediate reality facing Piero Busnelli was not just that of Italian society and market, but the world. With C&B, he'd already opened new markets in America, Brazil, Japan and Spain in 1966. His international vision never ceased looking for other avenues. We've been in the States since 66, but it was only in the last 15 years that it became a big market for us. Again, the credit goes to my dad who was struggling a lot and even losing money to keep a presence in the United States. But he always said, no, we have to stay in the States. Sooner or later, they'll get it. Sooner or later, it was later. But in the end, he was right once again. In 1978, another son, Giancarlo, joined the company to head the nascent contract division an area that has become strategic, which since 2003 has been led by Emanuele Busnelli. We are the oldest contract company in Italy. Not just the home, but hotels, offices and showrooms. The R&D center proved decisive in a sector that demands not just products, but also services and solutions for each problem. B&B Italia became a benchmark brand in international design. The first venture was the Meridian Hotel in Kuwait, then came many more. The Puerta America in Madrid, the Amman Canal Grande in Venice, the Mandarin Oriental in Barcelona and Milan, the Hotel Gallia in Milan, and the Bulgari in London and Milan. Major exclusive hotels around the world with outside conversation spaces furnished by outdoor collections, such as Patricia Orchiola's Canasta Armchair range launched in 2007. I think we have furnished at least 100 hotels. In 1992, 
Piero Busnelli was 65 years old. He'd already delegated some of his responsibilities to his sons and to new managers, whose numbers had grown from the original three to 23. But life and his ability to grab it by the collar offered him the opportunity to lead a new adventure, and he immediately took the helm. B&B Italia Marine grew from a chance meeting I had with Piero Busnelli, where I requested the collaboration of his research center, which I knew was very advanced, on a project I was doing for Costa Crociere, involving two cruise ships. I was also at this meeting. Dad couldn't believe he had this opportunity. It's all yours, the entire R&D team. Tell me when to come. I'll come down with my people. And from there, we set up B&B Italia Marine, owned 50-50 with Costa. We have since become world leaders. We did 32 cruise ships, managed 100% directly by Dad and my brother, Emanuele, who joined in those years. It wasn't an easy venture. B&B Italia Marine Enterprise drew upon all the experience gained over the years, the research center, the contract division, and the quality of the design work. When he set off on his new venture, Busnelli delegated key roles to his sons. With the beginning of B&B Italia Marine, Giorgio was given control of the firm's home division. Giorgio has completely absorbed his father's vision. In some respects, his vision was more international in outlook. I convinced all the family about one big change I felt necessary. In 2000, I thought it was time to upgrade our distribution by opening flagship stores. London, Paris, Milan, New York, Beijing, Taipei, Munich, Tokyo. The international vision of Piero nurtured the intuition of Giorgio Busnelli, who in less than 20 years put B&B Italia in 79 countries with 86.6% of exports. Their presence in London is really bold. You know, they have an incredible showroom in London. I, I would say it's the best, the best furniture showroom in, in the city. The driver of this development was the need to give a more precise identity to the company's furniture range. In the mid-90s, B&B Italia needed to be recognizable. It was the job of the designers to interpret the core values of the brand, rather than use the brand as an anonymous vessel for creativity. But here's how the breakthrough came. This is the story as told by the main players in the so-called B&B Italia lifestyle. The brand was a vessel, a vessel for products designed by numerous designers who did not, however, interact with one another. It is crucial to build not just a range of products, but an overall image. In other words, to build the stage for the products. Antonio, Antonio Citerio said to me, Giorgio, we should find a place to display all the products in, so we see what they look like together. What was immediately clear was the difficulty of putting all our products together. So it crystallized this concept of promoting a well-defined lifestyle when making a product for B&B Italia. I think it's fair to say that when you're a designer working for B&B Italia, your product should look like it belongs in the family of B&B Italia, but should retain the signature of your, 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 yourself, your, your own endeavor. You know. The mother and the father bears the child in the end. You know, it's not just the designer that gives these things. Design had lost its fear of association with fashion. It borrowed its best ideas. 
In this case, the strong image and the unique, recognizable style brought into the showroom in this building designed in 2002 by Antonio Citerio and Patricia Viel and dedicated to Piero Ambrogio Busnelli. B&B Italia now employs 500 people and has a turnover in excess of 154 million euro. 3% has always been reinvested in research. The 50 years we've recounted here have given rise to over 1,000 designs. In the furniture industry, we also seek out evolution in relation both to typology, because we change the way we live, and technological evolution. With the leather taut. Antonio Citerio is the designer who's given continuity and vision to the choices of B&B Italia. In recent years, the company has partnered with internationally renowned names in international architecture. They include Zaha Hadid, who designed the Moon System in 2007, and David Chipperfield with his Poser collection, inspired by the Marquis von Poser, hero of Schiller's Don Carlos. Today, a total of more than 20 international designers work for B&B Italia. The exchange of ideas on designs continues inside and outside the R&D center. But how is this final choice made today? Who has the final say? Who decides at the end of a development path whether an idea will go into production? I unfortunately have the last word. I can't leave this decision to others. It is a very tortuous decision especially when the products are very innovative. Take, for example, Ben Sofa by Patricia Urquiola. Opinions are a bit against it, but I made the decision, and I was glad, because it's become a bestseller for the company. I have these funny pictures of the process, because this object, this wave, really irritated us. I'd say, no, I don't want it like that. We'd file it down, don't put in metal parts, take out everything that's not needed. In the end, we figured out the form and it did have character. The cover had a certain rigor, its own logic, and the mold was fantastic. The product came to the market with a very interesting price in a moment of recession. You can't really listen to anyone. I also say this to my children. We can talk, but if you have a hunch, just go ahead with it. You have to experiment. The secret of success, continuous innovation of the creative process. B&B Italia is undoubtedly a success story, but one led by passionate, adventurous men. And maybe this is why there's never a trace of arrogance. In this family saga rooted in Brianza, no one ever thought that what had been done yesterday would suffice for tomorrow. And it's probably why Giorgio Busnelli, looking to the challenges of the global markets and seeking to stay true to the international mission of the father, has in recent years taken the most difficult decisions of his life. First in 2011, the termination of its partnership with the Opera Private Equity Fund, which had joined B&B Italia without, however, sharing its philosophy. And now, accepting the new partnership with Invest Industrial, which will give guarantees for international growth and industrial development. Giorgio Busnelli remains at the helm of the company. The world changes for design. Design keeps changing its shape its relevance, what it means. It's amazing to see now how many of B&B Italia's designers are not originally from Italy. And in that context, a company can't stand still. It has to find ways to operate in a new world. And that means financial partnerships, relationships, but understanding that the world has to change and move on. I think the time has come to think of the company beyond the family. To be able to guide the company towards a broader dimension, where it is no longer dependent solely on the hierarchy, but has its own management system that can implement, obviously, through a CEO, decisions that are, in any case, no longer tied to one person.
Giorgio Busnelli has chosen a group that provides not only financial investment, there's too much life, too much family energy in B&B Italia to let the future be only a question of money. Giorgio wanted the pursuit of a vision, a long-term project without geographical boundaries. My decision depends on the love that I have for this company. I think of all the people who are still here, who helped me to bring B&B &B Italia to where it is today. I told myself, you have to think about it now and not at 75 when perhaps you're no longer in a position to choose, but you are chosen. Giorgio Bocca wrote after a meeting with Piero Busnelli, until yesterday, I thought that making furniture in Brianza was a matter of glue, wood, varnish and money. Now I'd say it's something quite different with characters from the new frontier, rough at the edges, but with a ready imagination, vital, open to adventure, to risk, almost incredible in this country of bureaucrats. This will be the last thing I'll do. So for me, it was very, very difficult. Uh, to think that for many years during Dad's illness, I always wanted to protect him. And now, during this decision-making process that has taken about nine months, I've spoken to him practically every day. Give me a sign. Tell me if I'm doing the right thing. However, I'm at ease with myself. Knowing him, he would have done the same thing because in his life, he embraced every challenge.